confirmed at 6.08 p.m. Central Time. I rode back from space this time on a Soyuz, the Russian spaceship. It's uh, an extremely efficient, surgical, brutal way to come home. You come down and you thump back to Earth, and your body has to instantaneously go from the graceful elegance of, of perpetual weightlessness to the, uh, to the tyranny of gravity. Uh, it's rude when you get home. I mean, your body is so confused and, and uh, your balance system is messed up and you don't have proper blood pressure regulation. Um, you're nauseous, you can't walk, you can't balance. Uh, it's as if you've just got off this horrible spinning ride coupled with the worst flu you've ever had. It's just, it's a nasty day or two. After about two weeks, uh, they'll let you drive again, you know, so that you're safe with a car. But it took about four months before I could run again. Uh, because the, the pounding of the feet on the pavement, you think about throwing your legs down at the pavement with each stride, it's sort of like dropping your blood hard down towards the ground, and you're, so your heart has to work doubly hard to lift it back up to your head. Everybody wants to know, what's it like in space? What is it like? What do you, how do you trim your mustache? How do you brush your teeth? How do you go to the bathroom? How do you do all those things? And so I kind of resolved to myself that if I get up there long enough, I'm going to try and make a quick video and show those things and anything else that I think is sort of cool. And one of the first things I was doing, I got up there and uh, I'd been in quarantine for a while and my fingernails were a little bit long and I thought I'm gonna trim my fingernails. And just before I started doing it, I thought, hmm, this is different than on Earth. Maybe I'll just make a quick video about it, why not? And so I just stuck up a camera and did a little intro and moved the camera and millions of people watched it. So my guess was true that people did just have a, a fundamental curiosity. And the more we made, the more people watched them. And some of them uh, just went crazy. Something as simple as a national science experiment of what happens when you wring out a cloth in space, to me it was obvious what was going to happen, but it was so visually surprising to everybody what the water did when you wrung out a cloth that, I mean, nine or ten million people. I've had people stop me in the street and go, hey, that thing you did, well, that was cool. It made me think about it. And the beauty of it is not only was it cool, but it made people think. But playing that guitar is weird in space because uh, he does this thing up the neck. When your arm comes or hand comes up the neck, because the guitar is actually just floating in front of you, as your hand comes up, the whole guitar takes off sideways. So you have to find some new way to brace the guitar or, or hold it or Velcro it to you or something. It's, it's, you have to relearn how to play guitar. The space station is a hugely active laboratory. I mean, it's just, it's just a big, busy, thriving place. And we're somewhere between uh, lab technicians and lab rats the whole time. It has about 200 experiments going simultaneously all the time. So that, that's a busy lab if you look at any lab on Earth. Some of them are really hands-on, like the uh, flame experiments or the uh, cardiac ultrasounds we do. One of the best experiments on the space station is the alpha magnetic spectrometer, which is gathering uh, subatomic particles and whatever the universe throws at us in this huge magnet with a great number of, of layers of arrays of detectors to try and figure out what the universe is made of. Mars is further than almost everybody thinks. It's going to take half a year just to get there, that you're going to leave Earth and not get somewhere for a long, long time. So the psychological impact of that is going to be that there's nothing in your window. There's no huge, stimulating, uh, omnipresent view of our planet the whole time to look at whenever you're not doing something else. And those crews on the way to Mars are going to have a schism with the Earth within a week or two, I think, because the Earth is now a distant visual memory. And communications are going to get slow enough that you can no longer have a real-time talk with anybody. And that crew are going to become Martians within a few weeks, I think. They have to for their own psychological health. They will have to no longer be from Earth, and they will have to start viewing themselves as being from somewhere else. <laughs>